Advanced Electrodynamics, um, problem 2.17. What we're doing is finding the electric field from an infinite slab of um, uniform charge density. Um, the way Griffith sets it up, if you look at the figure, um, I think I have this right. Um, so, so he puts the, the Y and the X and the Z like this, and the slab is oriented in a sort of the XZ um, plane. All right, um, <clears throat> it has a thickness of 2D and a charge density um, of rho. I'll just write that right there. Okay, so let's see. All right, well, um, this is another Gauss's law problem. So, again, we'll write out our our Gauss's law equation. Um, so, what we're going to use is a, called a Gaussian pillbox, um, and basically, um, what it looks like. Um, I mean, it doesn't have to be this shape, but. Lots of times we'll use a cylinder. Um, sometimes using these with different geometries, for example, um, if you're using it on the edge of a, of a sphere or something. Um, anyway, sometimes you want these to be very, very thin. Um, in this case, though, we have our, our slab is infinite. It actually extends outward forever in the X and Z uh, directions. Um, so um, we don't really need a very thin uh, pillbox because um, by symmetry, there is not going to be any component of the electric field um, pointing in the X or Z directions. It's all going to be in the Y, um, in the Y direction. So our electric field is all going to be, um, in, in, if we if we uh, use the same axis for our, our pillbox, and and this is the y direction, then the electric field will all be parallel to um, the sides of this of this pillbox, no matter how thick it is. All right, <clears throat> so. Um, what we'll do is we'll call the um, surface area of one of the ends, we'll just call that A. All right, so what I'm going to do is start a, um, if I sort of redraw this, can't even draw a straight line, but if we have a, a Z, if this is our Z um, axis, and here's our X, you know, and we're, we're just kind of uh, zooming in on the very center of this slab. So our slab is actually, you know, maybe out here somewhere. Not sure how much this picture is going to help. But here's our Y axis. Um, so Y, X, and Z. And this comes out to um, a Y equals D here and a Y equals minus D. Um, so this is the boundary of our slab. But we're going to start with a, a pillbox that's um, just somewhere down here, uh, close to the origin. And um, we'll start with, we'll just use one that's symmetric about the origin here, or about the, 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 X, and, the X and Z axes. And um, so if, so we know, like, for example, if there's, if there's any electric field from charge that's, say, over on this side, it will go um, straight through the entire pillbox. And because the area vectors of, if I draw this in a different color, of the area vectors um, of the two sides of our pillbox are pointing in opposite directions. Um, when we 
do this dot product um, and the field's only going one direction all the way through just from charge that's you know over on this side um, it's because these two vectors are pointing in different directions that's um, contribution to this integral will cancel out so we don't have to worry about charge that's on either side um, so so yeah, so if we look at this integral, um, we have, uh, so this area, um, the part that, that counts, remember the electric field is parallel to these sides. So if we, um, if we have the, just like before, we're finding the magnitude of the, the electric field because we already know the direction is going to be you know, y hat um, or minus y hat if it's on the other side. If we know that, we just need to find the magnitude now. All right, so if we look at um, this here and then um, our area, we have this side here that catches some of the electric field and this side here that also does. So we have uh, 2e. Okay. Um, so, and then that is only from the electric field, or the, from the charge density that's inside this pillbox. All right, now we need to find the enclosed charge for this situation, um, and that's just going to be the volume of this, um, pillbox times rho for charge density. So there's rho and we have uh, a volume of 2A and 2D. Well, it's not 2D because we're not going all the way out. Um, 2Y. All right, so I went back and found a mistake. <laughs> I was gonna say something does not look right here, and I did the I did the volume of the cylinder wrong. All right, so uh, it's just a times two y. All right, thought I lost it there. Okay, all right. So when we take this um, this uh, the a and the two can cancel out, and we have a row times y divided by epsilon naught. All right, so um, so this is for the inside, right? Um, and uh, basically, uh, the direction of our field, well, it's going to go negative when y goes negative. So it keeps the the direction turns out all right if we go ahead and make this our vector and put it in the y hat direction, because. Hey, if we're over on in negative y, then we pick up the minus sign and our electric field points in the negative y hat direction. So that checks out. All right, so now um, what happens if we go all the way outside? Um, well, our, our left-hand side here still stays the same, but the right-hand side is going to change because we no longer uh, get more and more charge as we expand y. Once we pass d, we'll have a fixed amount of charge inside of our of our little cylinder here. We'll pass d, and then um, and and then the height of the cylinder will be 2d, or the I guess the width or the length of the cylinder will be 2d, and it's not going to get any bigger. I mean the the Gaussian cylinder you can keep taking out, out and out and out, but the charge inside out to d and minus d. So if that makes sense, right? So the only difference is going to be um, when we calculate the enclosed charge of our um, uh, charge uh, distribution. Um, once we pass d, it stops growing. So this y will be frozen at d as we continue to expand. So outside, we 
just have to replace row or replace y with d like this. All right. So inside and outside. <clears throat> All right. So uh, basically, I mean, since it's an infinite um, sheet in the x and z directions. Um, Basically, it will look, you know, no matter how far away you are from it, it will always look infinite. And uh, and the further out you go, it doesn't it doesn't matter um, how f you know, as long as you're going out some finite distance, the um, you you can't tell how close you are because this thing is an infinite an infinite plane. I mean, I guess unless you could see through to the other side and compare how far out you are with with d. But um, without knowing how far out you are, the field shouldn't depend on that either. Um, so we get a constant field. The field is just constant. And if I draw it in real quick. Just look like this. Out and out and out forever. Inside, though, if you're going inside the... Um, inside the slab. Let me flip this over. It's kind of messy looking, but we'll save a little bit of paper here. Um, so if here's our our y and our z and here's d. Alright. Um, at the very center, due to symmetry, the, the electric field's going to be zero. There's as much charge on this side as there is on this side. The e's are going to cancel out and we get a zero there. Um, but it will increase linearly, and and it will increase linearly in the negative um, direction as we go out to out to d. Remember this this equation here. It's just a just depends on one power of y, um, and that's all. I mean the rest are constants, so it's just the equation for a line. But once you go out past d then d is also a constant. All these things are constants. And we're just going to stay at these values forever. So this is, um, what, the, what I'm finding here is um, the, uh, I guess, magnitude of the electric field. And when, um, since it's a 1D problem, when we have a negative magnitude, that just means it's going in the other direction. So in a, in a minus y direction. All right, I hope this uh, graph makes sense because we kind of superimpose the the green, which is just kind of the diagram of the system with this. Um, so in blue, we're plotting e versus y as well, and in green, we're plotting z versus y.